Hello people, I'm Bharat Acharya here. Welcome to our new lecture. So today we're doing gate solutions for computer organization subjects, COA. Yeah, I'm going to solve all questions that came in the latest gate paper, gate CS2024. So if you're a student who's preparing for gate, maybe 2025, 2026, 2027, this is the video that you need to watch for this subject. All the questions that came from COA are here. I'm going to show you how to first make sense of the question. Yes, very important. Solution to dusri cheez hai. That is a separate thing altogether. First, you should be able to understand what is being asked in the question and then apply your mind, solve it, get the correct answer in the shortest time and beat all the other lakhs of students who are applying along with you to get the best jobs. Yes, you are the best jobs of India. You need to crack the best exam of India. All right, let's begin. First question. Yes, see the question. It's a super simple question, but see how verbose it is. Read it once. Consider a system that uses five bits for representing sign numbers in two's complement form. That word was not required at all. The sign numbers always stored in two's complement form. We've done that in the subject. In this system, two integers A and B are represented as so and so and so and so value. Which is which one of the following operations will result in either an arithmetic overflow or underflow? They've given four operations. You've got to calculate them and figure out which is overflow, which is underflow. That is your question. Now, when you have practice enough, when you see a question like this, it should just show its real self to you immediately. This is what you need to see in the question. That's all that is there. Rest, rest everything else is grammar. That's the question. It's a five bit number. It's a sign number. It's stored in two's complement form. A has so and so value. B has so and so value. Which of these operations will create an overflow and underflow? First of all, you should, you should understand what are sign numbers, what is the range of a 5-bit sign number, what is the meaning of arithmetic overflow and underflow. Overflow means you go out of the range on the positive side, underflow means you go out of the range on the negative side. It still is a 5-bit result, but you've gone out of range. It's not a 6-bit result, that is called carry, that's a separate concept. You understand what is overflow and underflow, right? You understand the range of sign numbers. So the moment you cross the range of sign numbers, you create an overflow. The ill effect of an overflow is that the sign of the number becomes wrong. That is why it is very important to check for overflow. Now, let's solve this. Stop being scared. It's too easy. Come on. I'll break it down for you. Don't worry. Like I said, the first thing you need to do is understand what is the meaning of a 5-bit signed number. A 5-bit number will have 2 raised to 5 values. That is 32 values. Tell me, do you agree? Now, this is something that should instantly strike you. A one bit number. Look, here. if it didn't look, here, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you. Don't worry. Yeah. Now, look at this whole graphic. A one bit number can have two values, zero and one. A, correct. A one bit, a single bit can have only two values, a zero or a one. You understand that, right? So two values because two raised to one, that is two. A two bit number will have four values. A 2-bit binary number can have four possible values. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. You understand that, right? Now, how did you get 4? That's 2 raised to 2. A 3-bit number will have 8 values. Come on, do it. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. All the way. Try all the combinations. There will be only 8 combinations because 2 raised to 3 is 8. So, in general, a 5-bit or an n-bit number will have 2 raised to n values. So, a 5-bit number will have 2 raised to 5, that is 32 values. Please tell me, did you understand this? You don't need to do this in the exam. If you're going to sit and do all this, you are not going to finish the paper. Forget it. All this should strike you instantly. You see 5 bits, you immediately understand. Yes, that means there are 2 raised to 5, that is 32 possible values. Are you clear? Like a, ten, like a decimal number. Think of a decimal number. A 1-digit decimal number has 10 values, 0 to 9. Correct? A two-digit decimal number has 100 values, 0, 0 to 99. What is 100? 10 raised to 2. A three-digit number has 1,000 values. What is 1,000? 10 raised to 3. Similarly, that is 10 raised to. This is 2 raised to because in decimal basis 10, in binary basis 2. Right? I've broken it down to you for you as much as it can be. I hope you understood this. So, this is the first thing that should click your mind. It's a 5-bit number. Whatever you do to it, it will have 32 values. Now, that's for a 5-bit number. What does a signed number mean? An unsigned number. What? Unsigned. Treats every number as positive. So all the 32 values are positive. That means they are 0 to 31. Only on the positive side of the scale. In a signed number, the number can be either positive or negative. It's on both sides of 0. It is a 5-bit number. 
it will have 32 values but now since it is signed it will have 32 values on both sides of zero which means 16 values on each side 16 positive 16 negative your 16 positive numbers will go from 0 to 15 look here 0 to 15 will be your 16 positive numbers and minus 1 to minus 16 will be your 16 negative numbers so your range is minus 16 to plus 15 tell me did you understand this yes it took us what four minutes to reach here in the exam it should take you five seconds and that will happen with practice the more you understand the subject the more you do sums like this you see five bit sign number instantly you realize two raised to five is 32 32 numbers means 16 on each side 0 to 15 and minus 1 to minus 16 this is what should come to your mind the moment you see five bit sign number why do i need this range because that is how you'll know what is an overflow and underflow. Now that you know this, you'll operate on A and B and figure out whatever the four operations are. You'll figure out which one goes out of this range. If it goes this side, it's overflow. If it goes this side, it's underflow. That means it crosses the positive side or the negative side. If it doesn't, that means it's not an overflow or underflow. It's a valid result. So getting this range was the first part of solving this sum. So we got this range minus 16 to plus 15. If I tell you it's an 8-bit number, tell me the range right now. Come on, in your exam, you won't get the same question. It'll be twisted, it'll be changed. If it's an 8-bit number, what is the range? An 8-bit number can have 2 raised to 8 values. What is 2 raised to 8? 256. So it can have 256 values. If it's an unsigned number, the range is 0 to 255, all positive. If it's a signed number, the range is on both sides of 0. 256 ka half is 128. 128 positive numbers, 128 negative numbers. Your 128 positive numbers are 0 to 127. And negative numbers are minus 1 to minus 128. Please tell me, did you understand? So your range is minus 128 to plus 127. Yes. Again, this should happen instantly as you see the question. It will happen. You practice right. All of these questions are very simple. If you practice properly. Now, let's go ahead. And you learn from the right place. Next, let's look at our numbers. A and B. Okay, it's all done for you. Pay attention here. A is... 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, what is this value? Since it is a signed number and MSB is 0, it means that the number is positive. And if it's positive, it is stored as it is. You can treat it on face value. When can you not? When it is negative, because then it's stored in its two's complement form. We'll come to that. B is negative. We'll come there. But first, A, since MSB is 0, jo hai, so hai. Whatever you see, what you see is what you get. That's your number. That is 10. By now, all of you all know this is 10, right? This should happen instantly. You can't think over it. This is, you know how to calculate binary, right? 8, 4, 2, 1. This is 8 and this is 2. 8 plus 2 is 10, right? All this is oral. You don't need to touch your book or your pen or paper for most of these sums. Most of them, all right? But that, that's if you are well prepared and you learn from the right places. And... You, Anyway, I like to keep saying that because there's so much overload of information. Uh, not everyone is a teacher. Most of them are just there for the heck of it. But anyway, not getting into that. Let's go ahead. Look at B now. Come on. B is, oh yeah, there is a 1 on the MSB. Now, what have I taught you? Go back to our lectures. What have I taught you? When you see a 1 on the MSB, you realize two things. Not one thing, two things. First, the number is negative and second it has been stored in its two's complement form nobody is going to tell this to you this is a voice that should come from your mind automatically don't look at it on its face value don't read it on its face value it has been stored in its two's complement form if you want to know what it is again take its two's complement that's when it will reveal what it actually is are you clear like i said it has been stored in reverse form reverse it again then you'll know what it is actually so take its two's complement. Uh, you know how to take two's complement? Again, orally. No, please don't do one's complement plus one. You sit and do all that in the exam. Forget it. There are so many others waiting to get that job and are much better. So you won't stand a chance. You have to do all this orally and you have to know these tricks. The shortcut to take two's complement. You want to take two's complement of this number to know the actual value. Okay, this is the same number. This is the two's complement. What do you do? From the right hand side. Copy the number as it is till you get the first one. From the right hand side, copy the number as it is till you get the first one. Then complement everything. This was 0, it will become 1. This was 1, it will become 0. This was 1, it will become 0. Are you clear? Once again, once again, take two's complement over here. Don't look that side. Look here. From the right hand side, copy the number as it is. 
till you get the first one. So you have zero, you have one, all that will remain as it is. Now complement everything. This will be one, this will be zero, this will be zero. So it will be zero, one, one, zero, zero. From the right hand side, that's how the number will look like. Zero, one, one, zero, zero. What is this number? Six, you understand. Eight, four, two, one. There's no eight. There's a four, there's a two. Four plus two is six. So your number is six. If this is six, then this is minus six because it's the two's complement of six. So that's how you get the value of B. So now what? You got A, you got B. All right. Take about five, ten seconds in the first part. Take five, ten seconds. A is as it is. A is what it is. B, you have to take two's complement. So take the two's complement, calculate the number. This is your B. Once you know A and B, the question will just open up for you. Now it is a question that can be solved by a school child. You have to evaluate your four operations. First, A plus B. Is this an overflow or is this in range? A is 10, B is minus 6. 10 plus minus 6 is 4. 4 is very much in range. Overflow is when you cross 15 or you cross minus 16. That's underflow. Overflow and underflow. That's what we're looking for. There is no overflow, underflow. This is in range. So this is your answer. This number is in range. Second operation, A minus B. 10 minus B. B is minus 6. 10 minus minus 6 is 10 plus 6. That is 16. If it is 16, uh-oh, that's an overflow. Up to 15. There are 16 positive numbers that go from 0 to 15. So 16 will create an overflow. This is your arithmetic overflow. Please tell me, did you understand this? Let's look at the next one. Pretty interesting. B minus A. B minus A, the reverse operation. Now B is minus 6 and minus A. Minus A means minus 10. That means minus 16. Plus 16 was an overflow. Minus 16 is not an overflow or a, not an underflow because the range on positive side is 0 to 15, but on negative side is minus 1 to minus 16. This is how sharp you need to be and how clear you need to be about your concepts. This is how they try to trick you. When you see this 16 is an overflow, you get a tendency to believe this 16 is also an error. That is an underflow, but it's not. It is right on the edge. It's right on the border. It's a valid number. There is no overflow or underflow over here. Are you clear? And the next one, 2 into B, 2 into minus 6, that is uh, what? Minus 12. Doesn't matter, but <laughs> minus 12. But anyway, the point is, press 12, minus 12, both of them are in range. I, I don't know how the dash got disappeared. I remember putting it probably, it was just, anyway, doesn't matter. That's, I'll put it in the notes that I give. But it is uh, 2 into uh, minus 6 is minus 12. Minus 12 is very much in range. Plus 12 or minus 12, both of them are in range. Your range is up to plus 15 and minus 16. So basically, this is your answer. The question was, which of these four operations create an overflow or an underflow? This is option B. This is the one that creates an overflow. There is no underflow in any of these. Are you clear? That was your first question. Can we go ahead? Now, oh, look at the question. Look at the size of the question. The answer comes by the time you finish reading the question. The answer is like this in a flash, in a jiffy, if you know your concepts properly. All right. First thing, as I said, you should be able to isolate the important part of the question. And that will only come by practice. Only when you studied the subject properly, you know your concepts, you read all this and you understand all oh, most of this is just grammar. The main words are here. And from that, you need to figure out your answer. Now, we'll go ahead. This whole video of all these questions and their solutions is there on my website. BharatAcharyaEducation.com. The link is given down below. I teach various subjects: 8085, 8086, 8051. These are microprocessors, microcontrollers, ARM processors. The new kid on the block, which is now taking the whole world by storm. Even NVIDIA architecture is based on ARM, not on the original Intel processors. Anyway, anyway, C programming, COA, and various other subjects. There are courses for all of these subjects on my website. The fee of any course is 1500. What you get is in-depth videos with full conceptual explanation. I don't rush the topic and I don't teach it for the sake of teaching. I've been doing this in the past 23 years and I do it with all my heart. If you've seen any of my lectures, you know that already. Uh, you also get the PDFs of all the topics with full theory, not just bullet points, proper theory answers that you write in the exam. Plus you get PDFs of Viva questions, MCQs, you get a certificate which is linked to your LinkedIn account. So it is there with you in your resume all your life and you have direct access to me. You can connect with me on WhatsApp. The number will flash on the screen sometime or the other along the course of this video. And it's there in the PDF. It will be there in the description. 
whenever you have a doubt hit me up on whatsapp i may not reply immediately if i'm shooting or if i'm taking a lecture i won't reply immediately obviously but as soon as i'm free i will reply all right hope to see you there wish you all the best do well take studies seriously now we continue